I like to give the floor to Mr. Naim for the next presentation. He's going to talk about medicinal, medicinal leech and international leech trade. Professor, you have the floor. Can you see my screen? Thank you, Mustafa. Do you yes. see my screen? Yes, we do. Leech well in fact which is very important in fact there are some similarities between my presentation and the other presentations that you have heard so far in fact we can date the leeches back to avicenna or let's say 4,000 years back in time. But unfortunately, leech is a product that is uh, endangered and under the threat of extinction. So in 2004, there was an approval from FDA. And in 2014, there was the treatment approval coming from our Ministry of Health. Upon these approvals, the intensive use of leeches uh, started. And there are some other uh, reasons uh, as well. All these reasons contributed to the decline in the population of the leech. And also, uh, there was the aquaculture activities. Since I'm also elaborate on the trade activities, uh, let me start by saying that if there is a trade uh, phenomenon, then there will always be smuggling. So although we normally concentrate on white populations, when you take a species into the culture and when you put it into the culture, then its value increases and we should also uh, focus on the trade part. And we can never ignore the uh, biosmuggling because it is an illegal activity, at least from my point of view. In the, uh, in the morning session and also in this current session, we have been specifically discussing the medicinal leeches in the European context. However, uh, around the world, there are some other common species that can be used for human health. They are used for uh, the production of uh, pharmaceutical products and there are some other medicinal leeches. And I will put more emphasis on these and I am going to quickly talk about the other parts of the presentation. So trade is not limited to the trade of live, le live leeches, but you know, there is the medicine produced with the leech products and also a Canadian company developed a cancer drug uh, against prostate and breast cancer. Breast cancer. And also uh, anti-aging products can be produced by use of leeches. Uh, in fact, uh, I am running and managing such a project. So all these uh, help us understand that the trade range is very wide for the leeches. In 2016, uh, so an American team and also our colleagues worked and studied uh, this uh, threat. 12, 18 and 28, S, I mean, three gene zones were studied, and uh, it, this is a Turkish medicinal leech. Uh, we identified it, and it was found in the southeastern part of Turkey. This is an endemic species for the time being. But uh, when a research is made in the Syrian region, I think it would be possible to find them there as well. Dear Fahrettin also asked the question, uh, maybe I can uh, respond to his question now since I got the opportunity. Although it is not published yet, I can say something specific about the Turkish medicinal leech. Although the morphology is quite different, uh, you see the 99% of genetic similarity. And uh, speaking about haploid, uh, uh, you uh, see some uh, differences in ecological areas. I'm just saying this for Hirdo Verbana. Hirdo Verbana belongs to 
the southern parts. It is the Southern European Medicine Leech, and the coloration and the patterns were covered in detail by the uh, other speakers and also the speakers talk about the reproductive system and genital uh, organs. This is the dominating uh, morphology in Turkey for Hirdo Verbana, but especially Ulu Abad Lake and other Pazara region, they show the leeches with different morphological characteristics, but uh, let's say. Uh, Similarities are at a ratio of 99.50% for, uh, for uh, mitochondrial gene area. This is what we can say. As I said before, if someone is, a, is the subject of trade, then it can go into other countries. Then you have to ask if it is a local uh, race there, if uh, the races from a different country was released into the wild in a different country, we should ask and find answers to these questions. This is my personal opinion. When you look at the recent maps, you see some overlaps in certain areas. And uh, this indicates to the similarities of species, but in some areas you see very clear and sharp border lines. And soon we were talking about the trading. I, uh, Talk in the uh, archives, uh, 1800 years, and I saw that there was very common trading activities in Anatolia of the leech. So Hito Verbana probably uh, passed from one locality to another, even in Europe. This is my argument uh, about this case. Here the medicinalis. It has been present in our country in many places in the region. Uh, sometimes they use verbana, but they write it as medicinalis. And uh, in fact, even in my studies in the past, I thought that the species was medicinalis, but then I discovered it was a different species. But all these, in fact, point at something. So in future, there are more candidates to be identified as medicinal species. So it is uh, mostly present in Northern Europe, but since this species is endangered, there is a very low volume of trade for the species. And sometimes the companies sell here the verbana instead of medicinalis. Unfortunately, in fact, my colleague Uteski showed this many years ago, uh, many years ago in its study. We see another species that is concentrated in the Caucasians. In fact, uh, distinguished researchers uh, provided you with the uh, relevant researches. This is Hirdo Orientalis. Utevsky, my dear colleague, in fact, studied this in 2005 and he, he identified this as a new species. Uh, he introduced it to the scientific community and the health sector. And currently in Azerbaijan, they are breeding this species. And in Gabala, uh, there is a nice organized modern enterprise where they breed Orientalis. I think it went into operation in 2017. Andres, joining from Spain, delivered a presentation and in this presentation he talked about new pictures of Troctina uh, and in fact it was a, a, a very stunning uh, presentation for me. I paid particular attention to his presentation. So in Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, I mean in North Africa, I believe that species has also presence. But in the naming of the medicinal leech, it is also necessary to have some category Organization. I think there is such a need. We have to recognize this. We can see it in Spain, we can see it in the, uh, North Africa, but we do not see that a 
lower parts of Spain region. At least we don't know uh, what level of research is available. So in terms of naming, sometimes the names may be very local. Sometimes the names can be associated with the place of origin. Uh, for example, I call this North African medicinal leech. Maybe this is wrong, but you know, we should have a consortium uh, where the uh, scientists uh, should reach a consensus about the naming of these species. Here I come to Korea, Far East, Japan. This is Hirudodiponia. According to our research, we uh, see 25 percent genetic difference in this species. So the, this is uh, closer to Hirudonalia. Uh, when you make the DNA analysis, this is what you see. But of course, there is need for more research regarding the species. Well, from Europe, Asia, and also Turkey, uh, we have many speakers and we have many scientists among us today. Maybe we can create a big consortium, uh, a big project, uh, so that we can reveal more about this topic. But genetically, my observation says that Hirudoniponia, the Hirudosulica verbana medicinalis, troctina, when you compare them all, uh, so. Uh, in mitochondrial DNA, there is about 25% difference in this species. Please pay attention to these arrows here, uh, because this is related to phylogenetic distribution and the varieties. So these arrows are not randomly drawn. Uh, they stem from um, the uh, phylogenetic tree data. And you see the first uh, uh, distinction. Europe and Asia. You see, this is the distinction of Nipponia. Uh, maybe we can also talk about different species here, but then it's Luki. There is another branching. And then we see the appearance and emergence of uh, Orientalis. Then we see the uh, emergence of uh, medicinalis because it got differentiated. And lastly, we, we see Verbana and very lastly, Troxina. This is the distribution flow, and uh, this is from uh, my research with the American team. So far, I've been talking about the Hirudo genus. That was some short information about its distribution. However, you know, uh, those are some other species uh, the, that is being uh, used. For example, Hirudonaria javanica, the, uh, this is used for cancer uh, drug uh, production in uh, Indonesia, Vietnam, Java Islands, it is distributed and normally it is mm, in brown color, so it's darker in the uh, ven uh, in the dorsal, but in the ventral you see is um, a creamy yellowish color and mm, it is used by the layman, the public, and also it is used in the drugs industry. Hirudonaria manilensis, it is present in uh, Malaysia and you see it, it has been reported in the Philippines, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, China, Taiwan, uh, Taiwan Malaysia, Thailand and Singapore. But you know, uh, mostly this studies uh, come from Malaysia, this is how I named it. And uh, you see some difference here. Uh, uh, on, on the ventral, you see some lateral stripes. And when you look at the dorsal part, you see a darker color. It's more complicated and there are some dark colored uh, uh, pattern spots. This is Macrobella decora from North American continent. And this is also referred to as a medicinal species. In Canada, in various parts of America, you can see its distribution. On the dorsal part, you see red uh, spots on the medial line. And laterally, you see some black spots in parallel. And when you look at the ventral part, you see some orangish red color. Although it is not very widespread, you see some irregular block spots distributed on the surface. Uh, this is Richard Sonia's in Australia. Australis and Minos are the two species of this, and one is mostly in the New Zealand. And this one is mostly dominating uh, the 
and Wagamon in Australia. They are two similar species, but they are two different uh, and separate species. As for distribution, one uh, is found in the Australian continent and the other one is in, is in the New Zealand. Let's look at the global distribution now. Maybe the picture is too small to easily uh, understand, but you see some presence in the uh, North America, the uh, Northern Africa and Spamitroctina medicinalis, especially in the Baltic and uh, Northern Europe, Verdana in South Europe, uh, and also uh, in Turkey, except the southeastern part. In southeastern part, there is a Turkish Suriki, and uh, the Orientalist has mostly presence in Azerbaijan and Caucasus. And in Australia, the two last species I've talked of uh, have distribution. And also, uh, there is some in the New Zealand. If I'm wrong, please correct me, but uh, from Africa, I mean, especially in particular from the Southern Africa or uh, from South America, uh, we don't uh, see some specific data. No specific data is reported from these parts of the world. Let's talk about the international trade. You know, the, this leech is subject to size, and according to this, uh, the wild leeches can be collected and sold. Uh, in fact, as far as I know, uh, there's, uh, there's Turkey leading the list with 2,000 tons uh, in terms of the quota. But how much can we really satisfy and fulfill the quota? There is some question mark here. Now, Let's go to the history of international trade, and I am going to the Ottoman age, and I arrive in 1840. Uh, the leech legs were put to tender in that year, and then the payment uh, was expected in the Ministry of Finance, and this is the document from the archive proving it. Another similar example, uh, this is another tender document for medicinal leech hunt. Uh, so this is about, again, putting this hunt into tender. And with this document, we understand that the Ottoman Empire attached great importance to the trading of uh, leech. But I believe we can uh, date back the leech trade even further. Uh, this is my personal opinion. I think if we go back and uh, further uh, back in the history, we will find more examples of its trade. This is from Saloniki. Uh, 800 people from Russia and Kazakhstan came to Saloniki in order to uh, catch leeches. They are reported, and the Ottoman Empire wants this uh, situation to be investigated, and this is documented uh, in a paper now, which is in archives. So it means that the Ottoman Empire attached importance to the leech, the presence, the trade, and also the cons con uh, conservation of the wild environment. Uh, so that trade uh, is just limited to the Republican period, but you know, uh, we inherited it from our ancestors. So it started with the obvious Senna. So uh, its use and its trade, in fact, uh, are quite old parts of our tradition, our culture. Another example from the Ottoman Empire. Uh, you see, this is about the payment of the costs of leeches given to various hospitals. So uh, let me explain the situation. They send the leech to the hospitals, but the cases die. And also they send some to France. Uh, uh, and in the breeding department, they see some death. Uh, they lose. And then uh, the collector and the dispatcher were not penalized, but the Ottoman state just gave a warning, please do not make a uh, mistake once again, but the damages of the buyer uh, were covered and liquidated by the Ottoman Empire uh, from its own treasury. Uh, so the people who engaged in the uh, leech trade were protected, you see. This is the EU trade, especially in uh, vertebrates. The reptiles, uh, the frogs, 
and also the corals. Uh, um, you see, they dominate the EU law imports uh, with about 53%, 31%, and 10% of the trade. And you see uh, almost 45% uh, of the uh, total value of EU imports, in fact, uh, is derived from these uh, species, and mostly they are wild. This is an analysis from this science. The time range is 1987 and 2019. Number of exporter companies, 33 in the time range, and in 2019, it happened to be 11. Number of importer countries, in the time range, there were 70 countries. In 2019, it dropped to 21. And the number of both exporting and importing countries was 25 in the time range, but in 2019, it was seven. This is the list of countries uh, for the time period between 2018 and 2019. In fact, this is a comparative uh, study. Uh, you see six countries, both exporter and importer. And also uh, in 2019, this number is seven. In fact, these are the countries shown in red color. Uh, Turkey, in fact, uh, sales in uh, kilograms, and uh, also uh, because of the wild environment, the figures are higher, and this is, anyway, the list of the countries importing and exporting. Prices, especially in the breeding sector for 2021. Here is the chart. In the USA, unit price is as high as 15 to 17 dollars. Germany, almost 9 euro. Australia, almost 8 dollars. Austria, about 5 dollars, uh, euros. Indonesia, 2 dollars. UK, 12 pounds. Russia, 3 euro. And France, 7 euro. In fact, these are the unit prices for the products of the breeding sector. Let's have a quick look at the trade of some countries, including Turkey. I don't want to uh, give so much time to this, but there are some important highlights I have to make. This is uh, medicinal leach trade of Turkey. So uh, you see the figures start in 1998 with the emergence of sides agreement. You see some fluctuations, but starting from 1997, uh, in fact, uh, the sales uh, originate from the wild. Uh, in fact, you heard the figures from the DJ, eight farms and eight uh, tons of uh, breeding production. It means that in future, uh, we will be doing uh, uh, quite much international trade based on uh, breeding activities. So uh, uh, the uh, trend started with some fluctuation and the fluctuation ended and the uh, figures dropped. Them. You see the quotas uh, since 2014, it is 2000 kilograms, but uh, the ratio of full weight Dakota has decreased a lot, and uh, we can fulfill almost 15 or 16 percent of the quota nowadays. Size so pr prices for the collected leech from the wildlife during the summer, the price is lower. And, in 2019 and 20, the figures got higher. In fact, in the framework of complementary and traditional medicine, uh, there is a demand for the leech uh, the, that is read in a certain environment. Uh, but there's still use of the wild uh, leech and the uh, prices are going higher. But however, the figures, the prices for the last couple of years are not uh, clear and certain yet, that's why I didn't include them in the table. I think this is a clear chart, total global uh, exports and total Turkey exports. They, we put them in the same chart and uh, we see a, a simultaneous decline in the uh, world expo exports and Turkey's exports. Uh, 
and we see that Turkey's trade, in fact, is leading the global trade. Turkey's trade is based on wild uh, individuals, and uh, you see a parallel tendency between the two. Let's look at Germany now. Uh, importation is higher than exportation in Germany. In fact, think about the medical clinics in Germany and the, the utilization ratio is very high. However, the imported leach is mostly used uh, for uh, growing purposes. And, and then they give uh, the uh, new individuals to the clinics. And in fact, we also have the UK here. Um, probably uh, um, this is most related to their stocks of uh, leeches, but uh, let's have an overview anyway. The importation is higher than the exportation. And again, the tendency is uh, running quite parallel on both arms. This is the France picture. And this is again, a similar picture. The importation is higher than the exportation. And uh, especially until 2002, the imports were very high, but then uh, it is running smoothly. And although there's a gap between the import and export, at least uh, now they are running in parallel. And the France is a user, a consumer. It also sells to the Europe. And in the year 1800, uh, France established the first leech breeding farm. So that company located in France, in fact, is still running that farm. It is the third generation that is running the company now. And uh, they got uh, the uh, bootstock from the Ottomans. This is Canada. Again, imports are higher than uh, exports. However, in 2011, exports like, went far beyond the imports. You see the figures on the left-hand side. Uh, this is the tens, it's about 2,500. But look at the time range from 2010 to 2020. You see some variation. I uh, search the reason. In 2011, Canada established a breeding farm, and as of this year, its exports exceeded its imports. This is the USA. Imports and exports are running in parallel. However, uh, there are some increases in certain periods. In fact, uh, that increase is just limited to 2002 well, but from 1997 to 2019, we almost always see a parallel tendency. However, for Russia, it is different. Russia case is similar to Turkish case. It is based on exports. You see no imports in Russia, and the figure is about 600,000, or specifically uh, 550,000, and uh, the figures are all originating from the breeding activity, and they sell uh, the farm products uh, to the rest of the world. This is the situation in the Switzerland. That is the pharmaceutical production, you know, in the Switzerland as well. So in other countries, there was a parallel running between the ex exports and imports, but you see some linear increase in the imports for the Switzerland. In fact, they are doing some revisions and this is going to evolve into something different. There will be some slight increase, I think. Uh, you know, science enters some data in time and that will change, I guess. Yes, but the importation is increasing linearly for Switzerland and with a pharmaceutical company, in fact, they're producing a, a drug and they sell it in the market with FDA approval. This is the situation of Ukraine. The, uh, structure, in fact, we structurally see some similarities. And when I visited Ukraine, in fact, uh, for an international symposium, I also made some research in the region. And in fact, 
and the ground floors of the hospitals, they do uh, some breeding activities. That was a nice experience for me to see it. And I, I saw their system, the system is running uh, smoothly. In fact, on the basement of the hospital, they uh, rear and produce the uh, leeches and then on the upper floors, they use the same leech for treatment. And you see the exports are higher than imports. In 2011, you see a very sharp surge increase and a, a, a huge amount of sales took place. I see that they are going on very well in terms of the breeding activities, Lithuania now. And again, exportation is lower than importation, that's the usual case. But for importation, there is some volatility some fluctuation. In fact, for Lithuania, we see it for the first time in 2003. Other countries uh, entered this business uh, earlier, but, you know, Lithuania joined the club later on. In 2019, we see a surge. The uh, amount in pieces increased to 100,000. Well, the trade is not limited to the actual trade of leeches, but also some other materials. In the past, in Europe, uh, they used certain containers uh, with uh, specific uh, tiling and painting. They put the leech in it, and currently they also sell it in the market. They put the leech in those containers, and then people uh, use the leech for and by themselves. And I believe they may also be part of international trade in future. There's also an undesirable aspect and dimension of the trade. This is biotrafficking. Well, here there's some news. Uh, in 2010, there were two uh, Azerbaijanis caught trying to smuggle medicinal leeches abroad. In 2017, more than 26,000 medicinal leeches were seized. Ihlas News Agency covered a story in 2017. A total of 62,500 leeches were brought to Turkey from Bucharest. They weighed 82 kilograms and they were seized at Istanbul airport. Turk time story. 25,000 leeches were caught uh, when they were brought to Turkey from Ukraine and in Istanbul airport, they were found hidden in women's stockings and they were seized. And the teams of the DG for fisheries and aquaculture uh, were there in the morning presentations. Uh, you heard that uh, Minister of Forestry and Agriculture and also DG uh, for, for uh, Fisheries and Aquaculture, uh, they have their hardworking teams, they're always in the field, day, uh, day and night. I congratulate them all. I would like to give my best wishes to all of them. Okay, there is some decline in the trade. There is decline in the wildlife and there are some factors affecting the leech and we can talk about the reasons in fact that can be narrated in length however i'd like to give a short summary so the main factor of decline in the wildlife is drying of the wetlands. In fact, that was applicable in the past. Now we conserve our wetlands and we preserve them. But when you look around the globe, some underdeveloped countries are making the mistakes that we used to do in the past. Uh, so the drying of the wetlands to fight parasites such as mosquitoes uh, and also to gain farmland. So many reed uh, areas were dried uh, by digging water ditches. 
in fact that was a huge impact on the trade and we tried to regain uh, we tried to correct this however that was some mistake made in the past the ingress of pesticides or herbicides into wetlands by runoff in time from agricultural land is another reason uh, so that creates a huge pressure on the leeches and it causes death so uh, think about the same wetland and when you visit it in different years you see a declining population in fact even in national parks where the collection is prohibited you see the same phenomenon uh, because around the park there is intensive agricultural land Climate change is another factor. Of course, we cannot put all the uh, blame on it. In fact, we tried to dry many of our wetlands in the past, but now there is the global climate change, which is drying out our wetlands. And we have many visuals proving this. Maybe we should also talk about uh, this at length, but we should all think about what we can do. Uh, and we should create some common sense in order to deal with this situation. Increased pressure on natural populations as a result of increased use of human therapy. But you know, it was always used in human therapy, starting from Avicenna, when the modern medicine was not there for us, it was you know, the leech was used a lot, but the natural populations were never so much depressed. Uh, so currently, In fact, uh, we're still using the uh, natural populations uh, for complementary and traditional uh, medicine. So uh, what Mr. Mustafa has just said is uh, quite right. In fact, the broad stock comes from the wildlife. But I think next year, the same amount of fries should be released into the wild in order to substitute the stock. I think there are authorities here listening to me. Maybe they will take this into consideration. I got a warning, by the way, to stop, but I have one last sentence to say, biotrafficking. So you can seize, you may not seize. Uh, please be aware that there is always some leak. So there's the back trade, the uh, and airplane passengers, may do the trafficking and some x-rays, you know, you can easily miss it because these are invertebrate. I would like to thank you for your patience and attention. Thank you very much, Professor, for the nice presentation. We will not be receiving any questions, unfortunately. Uh, we are lagging so much behind the schedule. Um, you know, we have to speed up and we have to be quick to catch up with the agenda. I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Sergei Uteski to moderate the session from now on. Thank you, sir. You have the floor for the moderation, Mr. Sergei. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comprehensive uh, presentation, Naim. Uh, so, uh, so it, it's really in, included um, many respects of leech bi biology, terrain, 